for iPad and for iPhone. Right? And if you're an Android developer, you're writing for all their support. We know there's a lot of fragmentation there, so you have to be careful. But nonetheless, once you write it, it's going to run on anything that supports that version. But with Windows 8, we were writing for a specific device. And so you would, you would write it specifically for the phone, or you would write it specifically for Windows. But with Windows 10, you write it for everything. Yep. Once you write it, it just runs, and you trust that UAP now has been spread across all possible Windows installations, which we just announced the Raspberry Pi installation. Yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. it's just growing and growing. It's pretty terrifying. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It's, when it runs on a pencil, that's when you know it's going to be <laughs> awesome. All right. So if you're a developer and you use Microsoft tooling, one of the best things that you get to enjoy is one simple unified development environment. And so other platforms have similar sort of uh, value adds, right? but nothing like ours. I mean, where truly you go in, there's a single tool, and that one tool is all that you need. And so let's go through and uh, talk about what that is. That is Visual Studio, our IDE. Visual Studio is the developer everything. It's the everything you need. It's every single project type that we have. So if you're going to create a game, or if you're going to create a web service, or if you're going to create a desktop Windows app, whatever it is you're going to create, all you need is Visual Studio, and we'll talk about the versions of Visual Studio, but I might as well say right now, you only need one version of Visual Studio as well. It's just brilliant. Um, every developer task as well, if you're the editor, if you're doing architecture, if you're doing UX design, if you're debugging or profiling, whatever it is that you're doing to your application or doing to your overall solution, all of those tools are right there in Visual Studio, and we know we can extend Visual Studio, and there are thousands of extensions already in the gallery that allow you to do just magnificent things. But we also support all of the languages. If you decide that you're going to write in C++ instead of C Sharp, for example, it's still just Visual Studio, and you get all the same sort of love from Visual Studio with that as well. You're a web developer, you're a XAML developer, whatever you are, Visual Studio gives you that development experience that you want. And then there's Visual Studio Online. What's Visual Studio Online, Andy? Are, is it a browser-based Visual yeah, Studio? No, yeah, it's important to say what it Perhaps it isn't. So it isn't that. It's not developing up in the cloud, but what it is is a set of cloud services that you, you can use for like your source code control, for project management, um, yeah, um, project lifecycle. It's a whole set of uh, application lifecycle management tools uh, that you can subscribe to and use. Um, actually, if you're a small team, you, know, you can use it for free. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, and there, it's there for you to use. So it means essentially it's. Team Foundation Server in the cloud, so it allows. It means you can use all those great services for your application lifecycle management, but you don't need to actually install TFS on your own server. And VisualStudio.com, and you jump right to it, yeah. and you can create a project today and just immediate. I mean, why you wouldn't use it is crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe you're a, you're in love with Git, right? And so you think, well, I won't use Visual Studio. I'll use GitHub instead. But you can use Git just the same in Visual Studio yep. Online as well. Which is, yeah. There's so, really so, no reason to, yeah. not to use it. Source Control supports Git and, uh, and TFS as well, so you yeah. can choose whatever you so want. So Visual Studio comes in a handful of versions. Uh, the three versions primarily here are Ultimate, Premium, and Community Edition. And so where Ultimate and Premium, you often see those in enterprises and with large development teams that are really doing serious ALM sort of work. So they're doing, like if you have Ultimate, you can do all kinds of architectural modeling and kind of advanced diagnostics. With Premium, that's like a team member's kind of uh, inside an enterprise where you're using it and you're doing all the sort of ALM feedback and I can start interacting with my stakeholders with that. But Community... Yeah. What developer feature is missing in community? It's astonishing. Community is free, and it's like it's it actually has is the the feature set. Shipping and handling is included. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is a hundred percent free. Visual Studio yeah. 2013 community and 2015. I mean, starting with 2013 is where we got Community Edition. Yep. And it basically replaced Professional. Visual yeah. Studio Professional and Community are almost one-to-one. -one. Because before that, we used to have our starter editions, which were free and much loved by many developers who download the, di oh, the different Express uh, version. Express, sorry, yeah, yeah. The Express edition version. So we had different Express SKUs for, for different kind of web, mobile, and, yep. and, kind of, and they were great. And loads of people created great stuff with they're it. They're still around. I, still. I, I don't know why they're still around. With yeah. Community, but you community, can open you every project. The professional project. edition with all of those great, great tools. And if you're doing web development, Community uh, Edition. Yeah. You're doing XAML development, Community edition, yep. phone development, community edition. I mean, yep. it's incredible. You interact with Visual Studio Online, community edition. Yep. So if you're an independent developer or you're a, you're a hobbyist or you just have a team, 
Now there are some restrictions around community that says if you work for a Fortune 500 style company and you have a certain, I don't remember what it is, but you know, there's a threshold if your company is too big you can't use it. But um, I, you know, that's, yeah. that's the 80% the get it for free. All right, let's take a look just at Visual Studio, a, a quick survey to see um, kind of what Visual Studio looks like. And so if you are unfamiliar with it, we'll talk right through it. All right, so this is Visual Studio 2015. Looks just like Visual Studio 2013 for the most part. I can create a new project here, and you can see on the left it lists all the different project types that I can create. The Windows 10, Windows 8, desktop apps, iOS apps, Android apps, cloud apps, everything that can possibly be created can be created here. Now, th not to be confused, you know, this isn't Eclipse and this isn't Xcode, but this is definitely... Um, it's definitely the Microsoft solution to all this development, all these development tasks. All right, so let's go ahead and go into the Windows 10 node here, and I'll create a blank UAP application. And look, at first, Ian asks me if I want to use a centralized server or a distributed version control system like Git. Right? I can go right out of the box and pick whatever it is that I want to. I'm not going to put this in source control. And uh, so let's just edit a file here so I can show you some of the neat features for the, uh, the coding activity. So I can say this dot, and it starts giving me auto complete, and it starts giving me IntelliSense. It gives me full documentation is revealed here as well, as well as all kinds of runtime things that help me out because this is all given to me in the context of where I am. So it doesn't give me the opportunity to pick things that aren't possible here. Um, then we have these quick, quick tips, quick hints, quick helps, quick... Yeah, quick tasks. Quick tasks. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's right. Quick tasks. So it's kind of looking all the time what you're doing, and it, it's uh, suggesting helpful things like, oh, you're not using all of these using statements. Would you want me to get rid of those? And That's right. Yeah. So I've opened up the editor. So this is the design time experience that allows me to switch around and kind of see how my app would look at different resolutions, at different size and aspect ratios as well, turning things on its side, whatever it is I need to. I can look at all of these inside the designer and have this experience that honestly gets me really far down the road before I even need to deploy it onto a physical device. So I have a large toolbox of things. Of course, I can extend that and add whatever I want. I can search it if I can't find whatever I'm looking for. But let's just add a button. So I can select a button here, and I'll just put it up here in the corner. So this is, the, this is the experience that I get. I can move things around and see it right away, as well as edit it directly in the XAML here. And just like I had when I was editing my C-sharp file, I get the same autocomplete and the same IntelliSense right here. I also have snippets and all kinds of cool things that allow me to um, allow me to be more productive as a developer. Right? And it's, it's something that's unified across my entire development team. And I can share a lot of these things, including snippets. So here's the simple folder structure. Look, I can click on this uh, CS file, and it opens it up in the tab above. But it's on the tab on the right. That's because it's a transient tab that's not there permanently. Of course, I can click it to keep it open, and now it's always there. But I can navigate that way through the tree, and I don't have to worry about cluttering up my, I think we call it the tab well, hmm. and get the tab well too full. And uh, just like any IDE, I want to be able to debug, right? So I can make a breakpoint if I want to. I can set those breakpoints to be conditional so that, let's say I'm going through a loop of 1,000 records. I only want to stop on the 133,000th record. So that I can totally set that condition right there, and it'll break rather than having to hit F5 over and over and over again, you know, 130,000 times. So that's really nice as well. There's just all the features that you're used to. Of course, um, Visual Studio is very advanced and has a whole set of emulators built in to it. So I can run things on my machine. I can simulate a machine and touch device. I can also go out to a physical device or a whole list of emulators um, that allow me to see what it's going to look like with different memory constraints as well as different screen sizes and things like that. It's just a, a full suite of tools that out of the box is ready to go, but then uh, you can really tweak it as a developer. I know that you like to have your settings a specific way and yep. you make, like to make it look a specific way and everywhere you go you bring your settings with you. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so I log into this. You know, my, my name is in the top corner, and the reason I log into it is because it roams my settings as well. But, you know, I mean, you're old school. You've been doing this for, <laughs> you know, at least four or five months. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, at least. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Visual Studio installs. And you get one free tool with it. Well, you probably get a lot of free tools, in all honesty. But one of the things that you get is Blend for Visual Studio. So Blend for Visual Studio is the XAML developer's IDE. This is everything for the, for the so XAML is our UI technology that is, um, 
Now it's becoming very much more prevalent than it ever was before. We knew it as WPF, Windows Presentation Foundation. We knew it as Silverlight, Silverlight in the browser, Silverlight on the phone. But now we know XAML as the underlying UI technology for Windows apps, for mobile apps, for and now even for Windows, Windows 10, many aspects of Windows 10 now written in XAML. Yeah, in fact, the things like the start menu that you see uh, uh, on the, the main, you know, when you press on the Windows button or click down there, yeah. it's all XAML. It's all yeah. XAML. The notification center as it pops up is all XAML. File Explorer yep. is XAML. And slowly but surely we're seeing XAML becoming the universal UI technology for everything inside Microsoft pretty exciting actually. Yep. But I'm a XAML developer. What tool do I use? Well, I use Visual Studio. It has a XAML a designer built into it. It has all the IntelliSense that I like. But maybe I want to do some advanced XAML things that honestly don't fit into XAML, but I, I mean, don't fit into Visual Studio. But I want some sort of tool that brings it all together and really is tailored for me. So that's where Blend comes in. So what is Blend? Blend is a tool that really is built for XAML developers. It gives you the full designer that you have in Visual Studio and so much more, including... Well, it gives you richer, richer design uh, tools. It's, a, it's kind of focused on the design experience, but yeah, including uh, animations. Um, yeah. Design time data is something it's really good at working with. So design time data is some data that you actually are displaying in the tools while you're building your app. It gives you, as the developer, and the designer, an idea of how things are going to look when it actually is running at runtime on, the, on a real device. So th these are all important things. So it's just a few things that Blend is kind of d geared up to do for you that Visual Studio, it's, it's kind of not so easy. Yeah, that's right. It's almost like, um, I know you aren't a football fan, but it's almost like special teams, right? Blend is a special team just for XAML developers. I am a football fan, but it's the real football. Yeah. I don't. It, but you, you, spell, with you, call you it. spell with two O's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, let me walk you through Blend just so you can get a gist of kind of how things are laid out. So yeah. I'll open up Blend. This is still the CTP. And uh, I'll open up a, just like in Visual Studio, it has the same dialogue, same look and feel, just a lot more features that are geared towards the design. So you can see some of the tools have been brought over really close to uh, the canvas so we can use them. And so all I want really right now is just a rectangle. Let me draw a rectangle and I'll draw a second rectangle too. So I'll just draw out a simple layout and you can see I've got rulers. And I can also add things like guides and pieces like that that really help me have a very specific design experience. And so this is my object tree or my visual tree as it's laid out. I can start making changes. And of course, some of these features are part of Visual Studio. But here in, in Blend, every feature is part of it. And so it's a great experience for when I'm really working hard. And so in this case, I'll, I'll create a storyline. One of the things that you mentioned was that um, animations are part of Blend. And so you can see I've created a new storyline. And it goes from 0 to 1 second. Right? And I can kind of control, let's say, a half a second here. What do I want it to look like when it gets to half a second? Well, I want the green box to be down, let's say. And then when we get up to a full second, I want the green box now. Let's move it over there. So I don't, I don't set what the in-between values are. I let Blend figure all of that stuff out for me. And so now I'll uh, keep moving on the timeline. Maybe at the final half second here, I'll bring it back to its original position. Now what's cool is as I move back, I, it'll display all the, piece, all the locations and values in between those sessions, for, even though I didn't set them specifically. And uh, in, if I want to preview the entire thing, I could just rewind it here, and I can just play it, and I can see what the animation would look like, and I can start to tweak it. Is it too long? Is it too short? Do I need to tweak this, tweak that? Where if I was doing this in Visual Studio, I could hand code this, but I'd have to debug or I have to run it every time I wanted to see it played out. And there are other features. I can interact with visual states. There are other features. I can, I can manage all the resources that I have. You know, you can have... Um, resource dictionaries. They're kind of like CSS files in XAML. So all of those things can be managed very easily in Blend as well. So it really comes down to preference, doesn't it? Uh, some people work in Blend all the time. Some people work in Visual Studio all the time. Most developers are going to want to switch between the two at one time or another. Uh, just for specific tasks, but it's just... And, and you know, it's totally true. In Visual Studio 2013, Andy was probably more right than ever because Blend could do 
let's say for, on a scale of one to ten, it could do six, and Visual Studio could do eight. But there were those one or two things that were just so nice inside Blend that you would drop there, and you'd probably go back and forth and have an experience like that. In Visual Studio 2015, Blend is now changed so that it uses the Visual Studio shell. So now I have all of the functionality that I have in Visual Studio, like autocomplete and IntelliSense, yeah. like snippets, and all the things that I enjoy inside Blend that often I would go back to Visual Studio um, because Blend didn't have it in 2013. Now I wonder, now that it's the IDE that for, for XAML developers that's been upgraded you know, in a way that it has and it supports so much, I wonder how much back and forth you really need to do. It may be less than we think. All right, so let's just settle in on Blend here. Blend is for developers completing design-oriented tasks. It used to be that Blend is for designers. And I think we all have come to terms with Blend is not for designers. Blend is for developers. But what are they doing? They're doing some sort of design-oriented task. If you're building your back-end service, if you're building all of your data models, and you're building your validation rules, you might actually go to Visual Studio. Because yeah. you're going to have a whole bunch of stuff there that just feels good and familiar to you. But if you start interacting with the UI, Blend is really where you start heading now. All right. I think if you're a designer, you can typically you would work in like Paint Shop or something, and then you can import those uh, those or paint. Yeah, or indeed, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, you could. <laughs> yeah. If you All right. Um, so Visual Studio Online, we mentioned it briefly, but let's just say real quickly, Visual Studio Online is not Visual Studio in the browser, although it certainly sounds like it. And wouldn't that be cool to open up a browser and start yeah. hit F5 yeah. to debug, but you only refresh your entire solution by mistake? <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, well, so basically, it's just Team Foundation Server. And I say just Team Foundation Server, but 